you guys remember, if you guys, if you guys figured out how to turn breadcrumb So, to have breadcrumb on a vehicle. So, there's a lot of mission set. Five foot wide, 7,000 pound vehicle. It's gonna trip whatever. Um, additionally, if you guys are asked to do a DV day, and let's be 100% honest. Good, that's good. So you have, you, you have odd point yeah. stops, right? You're just doing a short halt in the middle. That's all it really is, okay? Um, um, so, keep that in mind. Start to work this way. Soft Like settings, you're like, what what do you guys need to be concerned about when you're building this mission set out? Yep. All right. Can we toggle it in and out of park? Okay. Uh, I'm Lance Corbull, Keegan Waters. I'm with Victor12, Charlie Company. I'm a team leader, and I'm from Middletown, Maryland. Out here today, we were uh, testing uh, a new UGV, which is a unmanned ground vehicle uh, with the Marine Corps, coming from Marine Corps Warfighting Lab Quantico. And so basically, we're becoming skilled operators of these vehicles and hopes in the future with the 2030 um, Marine Corps Infantry Plan to uh, employ them in uh, future battle spaces. Uh, the events we covered today, we did a box reconnaissance mission uh, with an autonomous uh, setting on this uh, UGV. It um, decreases the danger for infantry marines, you know, possible like IEDs or just enemy in the AO. Uh, this is doing kind of that job for us. And then also the casualty evacuation, which is obviously very crucial uh, for us. So we head down. Um, an MSR and picked up a casualty, brought him back, just simulating what that would look like in a kinetic environment. I expected, um, by trade, I was an assaultman, so I, I'm very happy to see that, like we did, uh, or this, the EMAP has uh, breaching capabilities, like uh, MICLICs, so a lot of big explosions, you can shoot rockets, um, 
all sorts of we weapon systems with the crow system that uh, will be put on it. So uh, 50 cals, Mark 19s, 240s, Bushmaster chain guns. So uh, there's a lot of exciting things coming uh, to the Marine Corps with the uh, EMAP system that we we're all uh, excited to see. I definitely feel we met our goal today. Uh, just getting hands on and feeling comfortable uh, with route planning and just operating the machine as a whole. Um, everybody has become extremely confident with it. Yes, 100%, like, especially by 2030, like, this is just like, this is the crawl phase we're in right now. So moving forward, like, there's gonna be unlimited capabilities with, the, with UGVs and really like reduce like the in-person troop footprint and just want like, I mean, fire superiority and also just gonna save lives too. I'm Dr. Matt Fogelsong. I am the Robotics and Autonomy Branch Head for the Science and Technology Division at the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory. So the, the vehicles that we have behind us are the EMAVs, or the Expeditionary Modular Autonomous Vehicles. And they were really designed from the ground up, probably starting at about five or six years ago, to begin to represent what future tactical unmanned ground vehicles could look like, and to give us a, uh, a common platform to build off of to begin to develop TTPs and SOPs and new technologies. So, so TTPs are tactics, uh, techniques, and procedures, and SOPs are your standard operating procedures. So robots are going to operate differently than humans. And so we have to begin to understand what that means for the Marine Corps of the future. So the EMAV is a, it's a 7,000 pound vehicle. It's five feet by 12 feet and carries 7,000 pounds. It's a series hybrid electric. So that means that it's actually an electric vehicle with a, with a diesel 10 kilowatt generator essentially inside of it that charges that electric battery. So it can operate as a mobile COC. It can operate as a litter carrier to, to autonomously evacuate um, casualties. It can operate as a fires platform. It's really no different than any of the, 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 the Humvees or the other trucks we've had in the past, right? So the vehicle itself is important, but it's less important than what, than what we're actually putting on it. Those, those war fighting functionary things that we're gonna put on it are really what's gonna matter and change the battlefield. We're doing all this experimentation as part of Infantry 2030, right? And that, that means a few different things for the Marine Corps. It, Marines, it means that the Marine Corps table of organization, right, or what, how Marines make up units is going to change. The TE, so the table of equipment, so the equipment that's in the Marine Corps is going to change. Um, and that means that the way that we've operated in the past in OEF and in OIF is not going to be able to be the same way. The technology is new. Marines are thinking in new, different, and innovative ways. Um, and so that means we have to start now to make sure we're in a good spot in 10 years. So we, we've got it down really to a science. So for just a base vehicle operator, for the vehicles we have behind us, we can really do in about two and a half days. So the, the Marines that we have here from 1-2 have been operating the vehicles since Tuesday. Um, and today, Thursday, they're really doing full mission profile planning. The past couple days, they've really just begun to wrap their brain around what the operator control unit looks like. So that is literally a, a tough book tablet that they, they plan missions on. Um, and that was yesterday, and they got some basic vehicle fundamentals of just how you drive this thing and, and what it feels like to operate it remotely. Uh, and then today really began to focus around real world potential missions that you could ask this vehicle to do. So this morning they did a box reconnaissance of an LZ as part of an advance party. Uh, they later on did a, a, a casualty collection. So a, a patrol was out and they took a casualty and they autonomously sent a vehicle out there to collect a, a uh, to collect a casualty and then bring it back to a casualty collection point. Um, and then we began to move in some of the more confined space uh, around the woods in Camp Lejeune to understand how dense a foliage can you really operate this vehicle in. Marines always manage to surprise me, right? We're, we're an innovative group of people. You know, I spent 15 years in the Marine Corps as an enlisted Marine. Um, so I like getting back to my roots and training other enlisted Marines. Um, and their ability to pick things up, be innovative, be inquisitive, and just want to do things in a different way to get better and faster and smarter and safer and more deadly, um, they, they surprise me every single time. It's, it's always better than I had hoped it was gonna be.